cloud. Okay, welcome, welcome everyone. We are uh, at our proficiency class today. We are gonna be discussing what is most critical to have a complete RPA and have a really good winning opportunity, a good winning chance of getting your offers accepted. If you are here and you're able to, Go ahead and get your cameras on. Would love to see your faces if at all possible. And um, so before we get started on proficiency classes, I wanna hear from those of you that have been submitting offers frequently, um, whatever that means to you. If you've submitted, let's say two offers since the beginning of June, tell me, uh, show me a raise of hands, tell me what you've been doing. No one yet, no one yet. Well, great, this is Zyra, yeah. Tell me about Zyra, tell me about <clears throat> what you're doing and Andrew Lynn down in, in the OC. Zyra, tell me about what you're doing um, right now for offer prep. Okay, so I realized, um, and then this was because I, so on this last one, I partnered up with V, so we were always at the office and talking to the agent. But I realize I know everyone always says it, have that communication with the with the listing agent, but it makes mm -hmm. such a huge difference. Um, sorry, oops. Um, it makes such a huge difference to just be, I know. <laughs> that was like um, three ringtones at once, girl. <laughs> <laughs> to make everything just go smoothly mm -hmm. and really get all of your questions answered um, regarding the sale and how you can make everything easier for their, for their seller. So. Absolutely. Zyra, you hit on something that I wanted to touch on right off the bat was listing agent communication. You're going to hear me say multiple times, ask the listing agent, this, ask the listing agent that, um, it, it's critical that you guys get the information up front from the listing agent. Let's say that there's a property that came on the market at 350. The agent knows damn well that they, their seller wants 400,000. So do you think that that's gonna be a beneficial piece of information to you if your client's thinking about writing at 320? Probably some pretty good info to have. Andrew, your hand was up when I asked about writing offers. Tell me about what you're seeing. Um, yeah, um, I will echo Zyra. That was um, communication with the listing agent is huge because that was what got me my offer accepted more recently. Um, and that's the one thing that listing agent said and was just being communicative. Like, mm -hmm. hey, like, and it's not like a lot of like, like, and it was just a lot of it from the beginning. Like, hey, like, so-and-so agent, I'm looking to show this property. Is it still available? And just like opening that dialogue. And then showing that I'm working hard for my buyers and willing to work with her as well too. Mm -hmm. um, and then also like, hey, like what's important to the seller? What um, what do we need to do in order to be considered a top offer? Granted, she didn't have anything, but um, just showing that we were serious and putting our, our best foot forward. And um, I would say the more communication you have with listing agent, the more likely they'll remember you and also mm -hmm. um, think of you when they're reviewing offers and also um, shooting a video text after the appointment has really helped a lot um, as well, just so that they can put a name to a face and yeah. Yes, Andrew, thank you so much for sharing that. Those video texts go so far, you guys, literally just right outside of the property. Hey, it's Cynthia. I just showed the, uh, m and family, your listing today. Thank you so much. They loved it. Give the feedback in a video. Oh, it's going to take you places. I'll tell you, try it. If you haven't done it, try it. What's the worst that can happen? They don't respond. Okay, cool. At least you tried. Uh, Chris, your hand is up and then we're going to get started. Okay. Um, even though I haven't got to the point of of any offers yet, I have been blessed enough to send about eight or nine people to the lender and one of them is looking promising. So now uh -huh. I'm at the point, I just wanna be prepared for when that goes through, what is the next step? And I know it's the RPA, but I just yep. wanna just make sure. Yep, let's, <laughs> let's talk, yeah. let's do it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So that's actually what we're gonna talk about today is 
now what, what, what's next steps to us getting our offer accepted? So, and I'm glad that you asked that, Chris, thank you. Um, you can go ahead and lower your hand. Awesome. Thanks. So how you submit your offer truly can make or break the offer. So this initial communication is huge. We cannot emphasize that enough. Clean, a clean offer is oftentimes, yes, sorry, right? Oof, and a clean offer. It's oftentimes the difference between you getting your offer accepted or not. We have to have our listing agent cap on sometimes and think, how would I as a listing agent take this offer? If I see that it's instead of been filled out through zip forms, if it's been filled out by hand, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, that's not how we do. That's not how we roll. That's not how we're efficient. That's not in today's day and age. That's not how we're submitting offers. So I'm going to teach you how to submit the offer. So first and foremost, let me pull up here my screen share for you guys. Yeah. So, I mean, it's so important that you guys have this stuff like nailed down. Okay, so the screen that I'm sharing should be, not that one. Okay, give me one second, guys. Let me find it. And I, again, I appreciate your patience so much today, Zyra. I saw you had your hand up. Is there something else you wanted to say? Um, just, I... I would hear clean offer and it was the first time I was actually able to see like a clean offer. So now I know what a clean offer looks like and it just makes it so much easier than submitting everything everywhere because then the agent has to work extra hard to look for every, um, every agreement that you're submitting. So when you're submitting the clean offer, it's just so, so smooth, even for me, right? Because at first, I think I would get very overwhelmed and just having that clean offer. It's very, um, it's not overstimulating and it just, mm -hmm. it's just there. Totally. Totally. So when, when I first heard clean offer, I too was like, well, what does that mean? Do you guys see my RPA on the screen right now? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So a clean offer is one that you've completed all the steps. What this means is that you've filled out the APN. You have filled out all this first section. You've taken the time to find the realtor's DRE number, what brokerage they're with. You've selected these little dots here. Every place that has a number that should be input, like if your client is going to get a loan, this number should be filled out. If your client is removing contingencies, if you click that you've removed contingencies in this box, then the CAR form, CR, the contingency removal form, should be attached, right? Another item is the seller's names. So uh, here you can see that this is the buyer's name. In, in down at the other areas of the contract, you're gonna be asked to submit the seller's name, to provide the seller's name. Where you can find that is on the tax suite. So let's say that the listing agent doesn't have disclosures yet for whatever reason. You can go to the public tax records and find the owner's name right there. Current owner name. This is provided to us on all of our MLSs. It's called a tax suite. If you can't find that, hit up your um, title rep. They'll be able to get you that info for sure. So super important to have that information pulled up. Um, make sure that you have the listing agent's DRE number as well. And where you're going to find that is your screen. You guys, will you please unmute yourselves if, you, if I'm having audio issues? I don't know how well the Wi-Fi is here. Okay, you should see an MLS sheet. Do you see that? Yep. Or what's, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so if you need to know what the listing agent's uh, DRE number is, it's on your MLS sheet, it's right there. Their office DRE is gonna be right here. So you want to provide this information 
in your RPA, because if you don't, you're not going to seem proficient. And in order for your client to get their best shot at winning an offer, you need to feel and seem proficient. Having a fully executed offer is the bare minimum you should be doing. If you don't know what a fully executed offer looks like, go to Slack and type in sample RPA. Go to Fast Class and type in sample RPA. Go to YouTube. Go wherever you got to go. Go educate yourself on what a fully executed offer looks like. Sometimes this is going to mean that you have uh, disclosures that are included in there. Um, if your client has addendums, pull that back up for you guys so that you can see where the addendum page is. CRS. So in the contract, you keep scrolling down on item number four. And, and, and eventually you guys should be able to say without looking at the contract, because remember the contract is your script. You should be able to just rattle off, oh, addendums, that's item number four. Study these contracts. If you are making an offer on a mobile home, a manufactured home, that's no longer a separate contract. It's just an addendum. So if you have one of these addendums that need to be included, make sure that you're including that. That's part of submitting a fully executed offer. When you are chatting with the listing agent, one of the, I have heard this phrase before, and it's, it goes something like this. Um, I, I want to have your sellers be excited about our offer. How would you like me to submit this offer to you? I see that there's no instructions on the MLS. Is there a specific way you want this offer submitted? Again, where do you find out how they want the offer submitted? This is something that you're going to ask the listing agent. If they already have it on the MLS right here, you can see offers due, submit proof of fund with all offers, um, as well as the signed disclosures cover sheet. So I've given information here, right? Please only submit offers through home light listing management. This is one of my listings that I had. I, as a listing agent, if you have a buyer that you're submitting an offer to me, and instead of going through home light, you just sent me a PDF that's going to reduce your credibility of how intelligent of an agent you are. If you can't even read the MLS confidential remarks to see how I want my offer submitted so that I can show it to my sellers, that's going to reduce your credibility right off the bat. So make sure that you read that MLS confidential remarks and see how that listing agent wants it submitted. If they don't have that information in there, what you can do is you can ask them, hey, um, I want to just make sure that I'm making this as easy as possible for you and making it so that your sellers are super excited about our offer. How would you like the offer to be submitted to you? Oh, just send it to me on a PDF. Perfect. Thanks, Sue. Uh, would you like one full PDF or do you like them chunked out? Oh, just one PDF. Great, Sue. When I send you my offer, you're going to see a cover sheet right at the top for you. This is just going to be a brief explanation of what our clients are offering to the sellers. Also, Sue, who I'm pretending is the listing agent right now. Also, Sue, I'm going to CC my lender on that offer for you. That way, right away, my lender will know where to contact you. So I'll provide you with the lender's contact information, and I'll also provide you with um, every inf piece of info that you'll need, including my clients, proof of funds, and their pre-approval. If you are not submitting a pre-approval or proof of funds with your offers, that again is going to cut into your credibility. You should have your clients' proof of funds and um, and the pre-approval when you're submitting their offer, you guys. If it's not something that they're willing to share with you, you need to discuss to the client how important that is for the sellers to see that when they review your offer. As a buyer, it makes you a more credible buyer when you are providing this information. Do you have three days to provide it for the contract? Yep. 
But if you want the best winning shot at getting this offer accepted, we're going to submit the proof of funds and the lender's PDF. Uh, excuse me, pre-approval. Um, here's a huge caveat to this, though, you guys. When you submit the offer in an email and you're including the lender, for the love of God, do not include inspections in there. What you're going to submit is page one through 25 of the RPA package. If there's an addendum, include that. Okay. Here's why. And, and this is, this happened to me from experience and no one taught me this. And so I'm teaching you what happened to me was I had an offer. I had a client that was stoked about this multiplex offer that he was going to write on. And I'm like, cool, I'll, I'll submit the offer. Um, I'll go ahead and let the lender know about it. Da, 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 da. Got super excited, sent the offer out for signature. He sent it back. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to submit the offer to the listing agent. I'll include the lender. Here's what I did. I submitted the offer and it had not only in the disclosures cover sheet, did it say foundation inspection? I had downloaded the foundation inspection and sent that to the lender. It was a $50,000 foundation work that needed to be done. And the lender said, no, the bank won't lend to this. You've disqualified this client from buying this property because there's $50,000 worth of work that the bank doesn't feel comfortable lending on. That was my bad. I hurt that client because I didn't know what I was doing. I'm telling you now, even when it comes to FHA and VA, that comes later. You submit that information later. The appraiser pulls those, th that info later. When, I'm going to drill this into you. When you're submitting an offer, it's the full RPA package. That's what you're submitting to the lender. If there's addendums, submit those as well. If the addendum states seller to pay for $50,000 worth of foundation work, rethink how you're wording that addendum, reach out to your advisor and find out how they would do that. Okay. Is that perfectly clear? Cause I want to make sure you guys are real crystal clear about that. Do you guys have questions about that? Did you say don't include inspections with the RPA? Do not ever, do not ever. Here's what you're going to submit to your, let me show you guys. I'm a visual learner. So let me show you real quick what you're going to submit to the lender. You see how this says page 10 of 55, or excuse me, 10 of 25? That's because when you're submitting the RPA, it's not just the residential purchase agreement. You could chunk it out to just be those 16 pages, but you can send the lender page one through 25. This entire RPA package is what you can send. Um, if you're... If the listing that you're writing an offer on has, um, oh God, where'd you guys go? There you are. If there's a disclosures cover sheet, um, you don't need to submit that to the lender when you're CCing for the offer, okay? Let's see. Do, 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 do. So even if the agent tells me, like when I say on my MLS confidential remarks, submit the offer through home light. I still love it when agents CC me those 25 pages, they include their lender in there and they just say, Hey, I just want to make your job easier. I'm including my lender here. I've already submitted the offer to you on home light. Just making sure that you guys have each other's contact information. All right, cool. And then remember, just like last time, you guys, if you have questions, jot them down, put them in the chat, and then we'll get to them once we're done. Now I mentioned a cover sheet. I wanna show you guys what our cover sheet looks like. Okay, let me pull it up, give me one sec. And by a show of hands, how many of you guys have used the cover sheet? Yeah, I see I see a few of you shaking your hand, heads, yeah. Raising hands, yeah. Okay, perfect, great, I love to see that. So the cover sheet, again, um, if you're watching this and you don't know what the cover sheet is, um, search Slack for it or replicate it. So this is what the cover sheet looks like. It has our brokerage info, 
offer summary. And then what I'll do is I'll go in here. It's on Canva, super easy to edit. One, two, three, Main Street. Let's just say the property is going to be in Vallejo. Hello, I, the eight. I see Google Docs. I'm not sure if that's what I'm supposed to be seeing. It's not. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. I really like genuinely appreciate that. Let me get. How's that? Now, do you see a Canva slide? Purple Perfect. on top. Okay, radical. Thank you so much for letting me know. Okay, offer summary, one, two, three, Main Street. And this is totally edible, edible, right? So the listing agent, her name's gonna be Sue. So basically everything that I've put in the contract, all the very important pieces are right here. And then you can see, this is a template I have, right? So usually what I do is I don't fill out this section. Usually what I'll do is I'll go into Canva, duplicate this page so that the very top one always remains the same. Let me show you one I've already filled out. So this was the property. These are the listing agents. Here's the information on um, the, the contract that I had filled out. This is the client's note. And then I like to add my information down here as well. And again, I just have this blank one up top that I go through, I duplicate. It's the same info I send every single time. Okay. Did you say this is posted somewhere on Slack or the- um... It is, yeah, yeah. If okay. you look up cover sheet, it should be there. Um, if you don't see it, hit me up on DMs. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Hit me up on the DM on Slack. If you're not a part of our team and you're watching this, hit me up on IG on DMs because it could be that I just need to send you the template. Reuse that template though for Canva. It is such a time saver. All right, cool. And then even better than using that cover sheet is to use high note. So show me by hand by a raise of hands. Who here is using high note on Team Fast? One, two. Oh. Let me show you guys this. So it's a tool that we have with the team. And you should see highnote.io. Is that what you see? Someone give me a thumbs up. Yeah, okay, great, great, great. So when I log into Highnote, this is what my presentations look like. Highnote is a part of your onboarding. If you don't have Highnote, that means that you have not fully onboarded. Please reach out to uh, Rebecca Jordan, or, sorry, uh, Rachel Jordan and Molly Jordan. They can get you set up with this. Um, but I love Highnote. As you can see, I use it for a ton of different presentations. But let's discuss this one. Offer four, and then it's got dot, dot. That's because this is my template that I work off of. So the reason I love High Note when I'm submitting offers is because it shows me how many times the listing agent has opened my offer. Mm, that's pretty important, right? I mean, if I know that that listing agent had two offers because I communicated with Sue, hey, how many offers do you guys have in hand right now? Offers are due at two, it's 2.30. How many offers do you have in hand? Oh, we just got you and one other offer. Awesome, thank you. If they've opened this presentation 15 times, I think I might have a pretty decent shot. I think I might have gotten this, right? So what I do is I create these blank presentations for me to fill out. And again, I'm not going to touch this one. What I do is I replicate it and then I start typing offer four, one, two, three, Main Street, Vallejo. And here's the beauty of this, you guys. This is now I treat this as my checklist. So if I know I've got VA buyers, conventional loan buyers, FHA buyers, I'm going to make a template for VA buyers, a template for FHA buyers, and a template for a conventional loan. This way, I can go back and I can say, okay, did I submit, do I have the offer summary letter? 
Did I provide the RPA? What about the pre-approval, proof of funds? This is making it so that I'm thinking ahead. Do I have a contingency removal? Oh, I don't need that because they're keeping every single one of their contingencies. Boom, I can delete that here. Are they doing a buyer inspection waiver? Boom, I've got that right here. This is now my little checklist to make sure, you know, if it's an HOA, I've got those disclosures here ready to go up. For a VA buyer, boom, I've got my FVAC form right here. I use this as my checklist for when I'm submitting the offer. Again, it's something that you can use instead of providing individual PDFs, put this in an email, send the listing agent the link, include your lender. Hey everyone, stoked to submit the offer for the Fernandez family today. Here's the link where you can see it really beautifully laid out for you. I hope that this makes our offer the best one and it makes it the easiest possible way for you to submit how you, um, how you're going to chat about this with your seller. That high note is actually already on Slack. Um, just look up my, just type in Cynthia high note and it should be there somewhere. If, again, if it's not, hit me up. Oh, wait, I think I can just, let me see if I can just share this with you guys here. Yeah, here you go. Copy link. Anything I share with you, R&D it. You know what R&D means? Rip off and duplicate. Because anything that I'm using, I want you guys to use, right? It's, it's all for the greater good. Okay, my friends, let's talk about, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. one second. Oh, we need to talk about something like hypercritical. That link, the offers, the inspections, the disclosures cover sheet, if I'm the buyer's agent, I don't ever send anything to the sellers. If I'm representing the buyers and only the buyers, I never talk to the sellers individually. We go through the listing agent. If your offer didn't get accepted, do not go to the seller's house and talk to them about it. That is a slap on the wrist and you may be getting a disciplinary action on your DRE record. You don't want your face associated with a disciplinary action on the DRE. You don't, because you know what a client's going to see when they look up your name on Google, like 38% of them find us, they're going to see that disciplinary action. Don't do that. If you're representing the sellers, don't talk to the buyers, right? That's why they have agents. We are the intermediaries. We diffuse situations and deliver the information. Tim asks, does this checklist change according to the city? I'm so glad that you asked that, Tim. Different counties, different cities, different regions have different disclosures. So it matters big time where we're submitting the offer. And so that's on us to go in and do that research. Um, up here in the East Bay, some of our cities like Oakland have point of sale ordinances where the sidewalk and the sewer laterals need to be either replaced, the work has to be scheduled, a few different things that need to happen with those, excuse me. And so it's important that you research what the local area ordinances are for the different cities that you're working in. Even if the agent says on the MLS, it'll, it'll give you a slot to say, um, like public ordinances or local ordinances, even if the agent says no, go to that local association of realtors website. Like for us, it's CCAR for a few of us in the East Bay and research what those ordinances are. Because sometimes like, let me give you an example in Concord, some areas of Concord, you have to have the gas meter um, up to date and or replaced. That's about a $600 job. Who's going to pay for that? If your clients are scraping the bottom of the barrel to make this offer happen, 
who's going to pay for that? Is it on the seller? Is it you? Is it the buyers? Get that info ahead of time and prepare your buyers for, hey, you know, if this is out in the outskirts, if this is in the county, out in the country, in Concord, you may have to pay for this just so that you know it's about X amount of dollars to get that completed. And, and um, typically it's up to the buyer to pay for this. Chris, I see your hands up. What question do you have? Okay, so for the sidewalk, um, what if you stay in a condo with with multiple units? How does that work with the sidewalk? It does is it just on you, or is that everybody in the condo, or what, what is that situation? Yeah, that's a good question. So it depends. Each um, condo complex has different rules and regulations. So you'll want to read the HOA documents like we discussed on disclosures last week. So just make sure that you read in the HOA documents who is responsible for what. You can, call, again, call the HOA or have your clients call as well. So there's no blanket answer for that, unfortunately, Chris, but it's a really great question for sure. Let's see. So that, let me, let me give me one sec. Da, 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 da. I have one oh. question. Yeah, let me, let me do one more thing here, Tim, and then we're going to actually open it up for everyone for questions. Um, if you ever feel that the agent on the other side is being unethical or is doing shady business, document it. Send yourself an email stating on this date, at this time, this agent stated da 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 da, -da. In your email, put the agent's name, put the office they're working at, you know, if it's EXP, if it's Red Oak, whatever it may be, Compass, whatever it may be, write their brokerage, write their DRE number down. Because if stuff hits the fan and you need to call the CAR legal hotline, you'll have that information ready to go right there. Boom, you've already saved yourself 10 minutes worth of work to look it up because it usually only takes a couple minutes to look it up. But when you're in that high, high anxiety mode, it might take you a little bit longer, right? So um, to, to reiterate what we've discussed today, a clean offer is one that's fully filled out. You have all the information that you need. If there's a contingency removal, you've attached the contingency removal. If you're saying that you're providing proof of funds, those proof of funds should be there. Only submit the necessary documentation either page one through 16 of the RPA or one through 25 of the entire purchase agreement when you're chatting with the lender. I don't want you guys to lose clients and offers over that very easy, uh, avoidable thing, okay? Let's open it up to questions and we may, may get out of here a little early today or we may be right on time. I wanna hear from you guys. What questions do you have about clean offers? How are you submitting offers? Go ahead. Um, we'll start with Tim. And then as you guys have those questions, raise your hands. Tim, let's hear from you. And you're muted, my dear. Hi there, thank you. So um, about um, making a clean offer, um, sometimes when, you know, sometimes when I have time or the properties has been on the market for a while, I would actually invite my clients to go through the disclosure package and before write an offer. So we basically waive the contingent, uh, waive the, uh, um, what do you call that? The, the disclosure. But sometimes I put a three day to review the disclosure package or to review the, uh, the HOA documents. So when I put these terms on the cover letter, um, it does not, it is not considered a clean offer anymore. Am I correct? Oh, that is a good question, Tim. It's still considered a clean offer because as long as, so let's say we're removing contingencies. As long as you have your contingency removal form, that's fine. If you're not removing contingencies and you're stating that the investigation contingency is going to be at three days, as long as you've stated that in the cover letter, and you've marked it in the RPA, you're good. Totally. Um, it, did that answer your question? Well, I most of my business is in San Francisco. So for 
from what I know that I remember somebody told me this, that when you put, for example, I, I waive the con, uh, loan contingency, I waive inspection, I waive whatever, mm -hmm. it's all waived, but I, my client, my buyer just, and I, we did not have enough time to go through the disclosure. So we still, we still, you know, on the offer, on the, uh, the RPA, I put in, I need three days to go through the disclosure, three days to go through uh, loan document, um, H, sorry, HOA documents. So my question is, uh, so, so, so does that mean my offer is a non-contingent offer or, you know what I mean? Let's, <laughs> let's take a look. Let's take a look at the RPA. Because I want to, I want to, I want to illustrate because we do have, you know, different learning styles. Do you guys see my RPA pulled up? Good, cool, 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 cool. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So these are time to remove contingencies right here. So investigation of property, buyer's right to access property, not contingent review of seller docs this is where your three days would go if you're only yeah. giving your buyers that's the only place that you need to put it here's the thing though if the listing agent is providing to you all the disclosures on home light and you've signed the cover sheet stating i have received and read these that does not mean that you have okayed all those disclosures. It is a red receipt only. Your clients still have three days, whatever, how many, ever many days that you put in there to review disclosures. To sign um, off. Correct. And, and in my, what I would do for my cover letter is I would just leave it as that. If it's, if I'm removing investigation loan and appraisal contingency. If we're going in non-contingent, I would say we have a non-contingent loan. However, in the RPA, I've stated that my buyers have three days to remove these contingencies, right? So you have three days to review the seller disclosures. When you, when, when you say you, I have three days to go through disclosure or HOA documents. So HOA, for example, um, that means that we have three days to sign off on each document if our offer is accepted, correct? Yes, Tim, you're absolutely okay. correct. So there's no confusion. The agent's not going to say, oh, you're not I'm making a clean, a clean there's offer. There's probably, yeah, there's probably going to be confusion because some agents in our industry do think that. Okay. But, but what matters is what the contract says. If okay. I've submitted the contract saying that my buyers are going to take three days to review seller disclosures, that trumps whatever this other listing agent thinks is correct. And if you have a dispute like this, this is where you would go to EXP broker room or CAR legal hotline. Okay. Yeah, great Very question, nice. Tim. Yeah. yeah, thank you. That was a really advanced question. Thanks. Chris, you have a follow-up question or a different question? Yeah, follow-up. So, because uh, I haven't got there yet. So when you're saying three days, is it counting the date that you get it or is it the day after you receive? Oh, yeah. Yeah, good question. So when our offer, let's say we submitted an offer today and it was the seller, everyone signed today. We went into escrow today. Today is day zero. Saturday is day one. Yep. Good question. Days are confusing. And there's, no days, there's no business days, right? Days are just days. Yes, however, however, if your contingencies are due to be removed on a weekend, Saturday or Sunday, if it's a loan contingency, you may not be able to remove it on that date. So then it goes into the next day. Let's say our EMD, excuse me, our initial deposit is due on Sunday and that's day three. We can't submit that EMD on day three. That goes to Monday. It's, da it's days. Yeah, it's calendar days. Um, title offices are closed on holidays. It's still considered a day. So if you are supposed to close escrow, 
let's say you're supposed to close escrow on Monday the 20th, which we're all off for celebration of Juneteenth. Your offer is not, or your contract's not going to close on Monday. No one's open. It's going to close on the 21st, one day late or one day extra. Did that answer your question? These are such great questions. Andrew, you have a question. And heads up, Andrew is uh, part of our OC team. So they do things differently down in the OC from what I understand, right, Andrew? Yes. So let's hear your question. Um, so I, I just, I think this is more a clarifying point. So then days, contingency dates is after acceptance, but not open escrow. Cause I know sometimes, I don't know down here at least we can, accept it, the offer can be accepted like today at 5 p.m., but escrow doesn't open tomorrow until tomorrow. However, our days start today because today is the acceptance date, right, according to the RPA? Yeah, you're correct. That's that's across the board. Yes, you're absolutely correct. Yeah. So today is day zero. That's the day of acceptance. Tomorrow is day one. Right. Awesome. Thank cool. you for clarifying that. Cool. These are such great questions, you guys. What else do we got? What other questions do you guys have about submitting clean offers? Tim, go ahead. All right, thank you. So can you explain to me a little bit on the percentage of interest rate uh, we put in the offer? Uh, is that- I would love to. Okay. Because yeah, right now- Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go that ahead. Was uh, yeah, because I, now the interest rate has jumped up so much, right? So to make the offer stronger, I wonder if you can shed some light on how to kind of work around this particular uh, mm -hmm. part of the contract. Yeah, great question. I would love to share this with you guys because I've actually been able to save my client's deposit by reflecting on this number here. So we are looking at the RPA item number three. Let me show you how you read the RPA legally. Item number three, letter E, section one. We're talking about loan amounts. In the RPA, it is item number three, paragraph five, C one. So I'm going to, if I want to look up exactly what this means, I, this is the paragraph in the RPA I'm going to scroll down to, to read about. Okay. What Tim is asking about is this rate here. Okay. So it says fixed rate, or you can select most are fixed. Okay. Fixed rate. Oh, where do you get this info? The lender. You have no business guessing what interest rates are. You are not a lender as far as I know. You're all realtors, right? So where we get this info is from a lender and we're gonna get this stuff in writing, right? Remember that when we speak to our lender, we get it in writing, even if they tell us on the phone, hey, Chris, yeah, they're qualified for an interest rate. Uh, we're gonna lock it in today at 6%. As soon as I hang up that call, Hey, Joanne, thank you so much for letting me know that the, the Kleinfelds are at an interest rate of 6%. Please um, acknowledge receipt of this or you know, just say, hey, thanks so much for confirming that over the phone. Get it in writing, okay? Um, loan amount. Okay, so fixed interest rate or initial adjustable rate not to exceed 4%. So right now it's closer to six, right? Because this is a sample contract from December of last year. So what I can do is once I speak to the lender, let's say that my lender tells me that they're qualified for an interest rate, we're going to lock it today at 6%. Okay, great. What is the max lender? What is the max that they might be able to go to? Well, if they're at, because this is the lender speaking, if the Kleinfelds, if their interest rate goes below six, excuse me, goes above 6.25, they will no longer qualify for this home. They will no longer qualify for this loan. So what I do is, great, thank you so much for that valuable piece of information. What I'm gonna put in here is 6.25. Have the conversation with your clients. Hey, heads up. If we put in here 6.25, you will be able to, as long as you've got your loan uh, loan contingency, you'll be able to back out of the, the contract 
because the interest rate went above 6.25. Is that clear? Let me so reiterate. If, if, so if the, sell, if the lenders say, I'm willing, yeah, you can, I can give you 6.25, but you have to pay a, a point or something, uh, or you won't be able to get that uh, uh, 6.25. Is that still considered uh, uh, safe to uh, get out of the deal without losing the EMD? Does that make sense? Oh, that is such a good question. Um, I always have these conversations before we get into contract. That is so critical for you guys to do that, okay? Don't wait until you get into contract and find out, uh, does my client need to buy points? Do they need to do this? Do they need to do that? Sometimes down the road, you know, once we're, let's say 15 days in, it, it is, oh shit, now we have to buy down the points because the point, the interest rate went up. If your client wants to do that and they love the home and they want to buy a point and stay in the home at a higher interest rate, that's on them. If they don't, if this number does not mean that much to them, okay, cool, that's on them. You can also ask the lender though, okay, lender, if the interest rate's not to exceed two. 6.25, what is the percentage that the buyer would pay zero to blank percent of the loan amount to buy down points? Ask these two questions before you get into contract. Ask, get it in writing and ask, what exact number are we talking here, lender? Because I know my clients are scraping the bottom of the barrel to get through. I want to make sure that I'm saving every penny for them. So what does that look like, lender? And they'll, they will tell you. And if they don't tell you, let your clients know, hey, the lender is not being clear with me about the interest rates. We, we should hop on a call with them and, and discuss what this is going to look like um, because they're not being upfront about the interest rates. Have you had a conversation with the lender? And if so, can, can you please include me in that conversation? No, not necessarily. The question is, if we check that section, it doesn't mean that the client will buy down points, right? That's right. They can. They have the option to. Yeah. Good question. Nancy, your hand's up. What's your question? Hi. Yes. I just wanted to know what the difference is between the loan contingency and this um, point, uh, this um, percentage section oh, of the RPA. Great, great question. It is a part of the loan contingency. Mm -hmm. It's not in lieu of, it's a part of the loan contingency. Interest rates have a huge part to do with the loan. Again, if your client is teetering on their mm -hmm. debt to income about, you mm -hmm. know, is it 6.5? Is it 6.25? That's why it's important for us to find out from the lender, hey, we're going to remove our loan contingency how solid are they to do that? If interest rates go up by 0.25 of a percent, what does that look like for the Kleinfelds? Mm -hmm. Oh, it means that they can't buy this house. Oh shit. Well, we should probably have this discussion with the lender and my client on the phone together. So it's a part of the loan contingency. It's not in lieu of. And as long as your client has that, written in that's why we don't leave it blank don't leave that blank did, I, did that answer your question nancy yeah thank you awesome you're welcome zyra i see your hands up zyra was it you that had this happen to um well we're yes we have that well no it hasn't happened to me but we did okay okay for this last client that we have because the interest rates are so volatile and mm -hmm. they just won't be able to um to afford it anymore um, if it does, but my question is kind of just to know on the other side. So say, yeah. um, say this client, we put it for 6.75, not uh -huh. to exceed that amount. Say it does exceed, um, or let's say 6.25 to go uh -huh. based off what you said, say it exceeds to 6.75 and our client's not willing to buy points because they can't afford it. If we fall we fall out of, we back out. Uh -huh. They're able to get their EMD back. 
No. If, if we kept our loan contingency, yeah. If we kept our loan contingency. Wait, I'm confused now. So if we're going in with a loan contingency. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Here, here's where okay. it gets um, kind of tricky. I think maybe okay. this makes a difference. Okay. We are on a 45 day close due to the seller um, staying in the home once their house is built. So we have a date for them to move out by August 1st. Uh -huh. So it's a, like a 40 something day close. So we have to have those loan contingencies removed and stuff by those certain days. So how does that work? Am I making sense? So it is making perfectly clear sense. As long as you've written that number in and everyone is well aware. I see what you're asking, Zyra. Hold on. Now I'm piecing it together. Are you saying if your client has removed loan contingency, can they still back out because of this number that you've put in? Yes. Once, once August hits, because that's still so much time that we have and it's still so volatile. I see what you're saying. Okay. Now it makes perfectly clear sense from my understanding, which remember I am a real estate agent. I'm not a lender. I'm not a broker. So I would, Zyra, I would follow up with our broker just to make crystal clear sense from my understanding you would not be able to back out because you have the, you've released your loan contingency. Oh shit. Okay. The rates are usually locked in when you get your, when you open escrow, right? Typically. Typically, typically they are up to, from my understanding, from what my lender has told me, they can lock them up to 90 days. Okay. So okay, Zyra, I'll, the follow-up question now for the, uh, oh yeah, follow up with the broker. Wait, real, real quick, real quick, follow-up statement here. Ask the, um, ask your broker, okay, go to EXT broker room just to find out, just to give yourself that assurance. Send me a message and let me know what they say so that I can include that in for all of us. Because okay. that is such a good question, you guys, and interest rates are super volatile. So oh. Zyra, when you get that answer, please let me know. Okay. Andrew, yeah. Oh, I think um, on that, yeah, I think some uh, many times they'll lock in for a certain period of time because I had to deal with this with another escrow and we had to close by a certain date. Otherwise that rate lock would expire. And then uh -huh. so in order for us to, um, and if it does expire, I think we were in, um, the rate was locked for 30 days and mm -hmm. um, the seller was still trying to figure out their close. And so we had to close by that 30 days. Otherwise past that, that deadline there would be um like we'd have to pay on um, the some like there would be a fee in order to to um, extend that rate lock so that that was my case for my buyer so that may be something but yeah definitely check with the broker room for exp um and then we had to negotiate it to figure out like hey is the seller going to pay for the extension of the rate lock because it's on them but mm -hmm. um, yeah okay yeah. And so one more question yeah, so now let's hear. on the other side. So say we do, and this is just for the seller, like to know when you list, mm -hmm. say this does happen. The buyer has to back out. The house is now back on the market. Is it now back on the market for starting? You know how it says on the MLS, like day 10 oh. or day 11. Is that now day like 40 something? Uh, on the MLS. So, yeah, great question. So cumulative days on market, C D O M is different than just days on market. Once you go pending, then that pauses the days on market, but the cumulative days still go on. And as a listing agent, what you would say is back on market. Um, typically, you know, when it's a loan thing, we say back on market at no fault to the property, buyer could not qualify for finance financing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. You guys are coming with such great questions. Nancy, was that your hand from before or is that a new hand raise? Yeah, it's a new one. So now that I okay. asked that question, I guess what I wanted to get clear is why would we, why would we have to put the rate when we already have a loan contingency? Wouldn't the loan contingency just cover all that? Like what's, what's, why do we have to put in the, um, not to exceed a rate. 
on the RCA? It's, it, that's a great question. Yeah. So the way I phrase it to my clients is it's an mm -hmm. additional layer of protection for you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Thank Zyra's going to report back to us, right, girl? You're going to report back to us about what the broker says. And then once when, when Zyra finds out, she'll let me know. And then in fast class, under this class for today, I'll make a little note. Okay. That way, whoever's watching after us can, can get their question answered about this as well. Such great questions today, you guys. I have time for one more rapid fire question because we are running over on time. Nancy, is that a new hand? No, I think it's from the old one. No, sorry. All right. It's okay. Go ahead, guys, real quick, rapid fire. Anyone else have questions? Yeah, so I had a question about um, uh, when Tim asked if, uh, yeah, I just wanted, wanted to ask, is it common for to put in the, in the, in the presentation that um, you want to use three days to um, look over the, look over the, the disclosures? Usually it's five. But, but is that common? Very common. Okay, cool. Absolutely, yeah. It's part of your, it's, it's part of finding out you know, does the property need flood insurance? It's it's so that you know what your clients are getting into and so that you can explain to your clients what they're getting into. Great questions, you guys. Please make sure that you read the sample RPA. Go to Fast Class and watch the videos. There are two super in-depth videos. There is a sample RPA for y'all to read. What I do is I print that sample RPA and I highlight everything that I need to make sure I have written out in my contract so that next time if, if I'm in a hurry and I need to write the contract quickly, I have it ready to go. It's not as anxiety crushing at that point. Still, I see your hand up, love. What's your question? No, Motion's trying to, I, I think I pronounced his name correctly, is trying to ask a question. Hey, Motion, did you have a question? Yeah, I had a question. Motion. Thank you. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I just, um, I'm a visual person, learner as well. And uh, just two quick questions. One, when you say fast class, is that the library of videos? It is, yeah. Okay. And two, um, I'm looking at an email that because I was searching Slack while we we're talking. I see an email uh -huh. that Karina had um, sent um, a while ago, like a year ago, and it talks about offer document che checklist with the uh, offer cover letter, pre-approval letter, proof of funds, and et cetera, et cetera. Is there a way to get a copy of all of these? And my second question, the second tier part of that is, um, is there like a like in, when you submit a loan from a mortgage company where there's um, a document uh, order like a package order like this should go here this should go here and is there a way to learn about that is there another let me show you well how do you actually put the package together and what does that look like so the, the email that you're looking at from karina that's the order two let years me show ago you okay guys yeah, yeah because the rpa is the same so you would take out the peed because we no longer do peds um, and then you would change it out for the new RPA. I want to show you guys real quick, Asana, there's a video in Fast Class, that's our video library. What I do is I have my high note that I showed you. Oh, wait, can you see a purple screen that says good afternoon, Sin? Okay, cool. This is Asana. There's a video about how to use Asana. There's a like 30 minute in depth video about using Asana. Let me show you guys here, contract details. I'm a visual learner too, to the max. So what <laughs> I did is I have, and in the video for Asana, I stop and I scroll and it will give you enough time to take a screenshot. So you don't have to do it now, but this is the order that it should be in for a conventional loan. For buyers, for FHA and VA, here's my order. For seller docs, when I go to a listing appointment, here's the documents I take with me to sign. Again, this is going to be in Asana. My YouTube also has all this information. Okay. I don't I don't uh, see that folder that you were just in in Slack. It's not, it's not going to be there. 
That okay. is what I've created <laughs> oh, okay. on my Asana. So go into gotcha. fast class, you guys research how to use Asana. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see it, it the Asana checklist information, tips on how to best use Asana, things like this. Please utilize fast class, you guys. It's yeah. incredible. It has all this information in it for you. And it's not as so on Slack, you have to search a few different channels to find it, right? I love Slack. Slack is so my jam, but fast <laughs> class has totally removed a lot of all the extra like channels and messages and other things in fast class. It's just the information that you need to know. Very, very, very dialed in. The lead, the offer flow chart, is that on Slack too, Antonio asks? Mm, it should be there, but if you can't find it there, again, it'll be in the Asana tips video. Motion, did that answer your question? You good? Yeah, I just wonder if I can get hard copies of, of these things, like, like samples, so I can actually look at them. Oh, yeah, um, there should be samples in Slack. Keep searching, make sure you're searching on your computer not your phone and search for the files up on the top. It'll say channels, people, messages, search for files. If you can't find them, send me a DM on Slack. Okay. Great thank questions. You. All right, Simi, we're going to take your question and then that's it for today. Okay. Uh, hi. Um, so I have not uh, made any offers or I've not written any offers yet. Uh, but my question is, uh, so if I have a client who we are looking at a house and they really like the house and they're ready to make an offer. So I, when I write an offer, does it go to the listing agent first? Because I did not understand why do we need to send the offer to the lender, the RPA? So the list uh, yeah yeah so the rpa first if you are here and you are an advisee send your rpa to your advisor to review first okay hey cynthia i'm checking in can you please review this rpa because i have offers due at 3 p.m cool yeah let me take a look at it once I've reviewed it and I tell you, hey, fix items 3B and 3C, and then you're good to submit to your client. Then you'll send it to your client for DocuSign. Your client signs it. Once your client signs it, then you sign it. Once you sign it and it's ready to go, then you send it either through Homelight, Glide, wherever, you're, wherever the agent wants you to send it, you'll send it to them in that way. Then you're going to email a PDF or a high note to the listing agent and the lender. Remember, do not ever send inspections to the lender. You are only sending pages one through 16 of the RPA or one through 25 of the entire offer package. Got it. Yeah, listing agent only gets your offer once it is wrapped up in a pretty bow. You have checked every single dot. You have crossed every single T. You know without a single question that your offer is squeaky clean and ready to go. Sin, All right, Sin, Sin, yeah. when we do a when we do a RPA for the first time and we're nervous about, you know, not screwing up because our licenses are on the line, do yep. we have someone like um, Karina that we can just say, hey, can you review this and see if that's I'm your advisors? Yep. So your advisors are going to be reaching out to you guys with sample RPAs or go to fast class and look up for a, for a scenario is what you're looking for, a scenario to write an RPA on, or just pull up a random listing on the RPA, log into zip forms, watch the videos on fast class on how to write an RPA, teach yourself how to do it first before you have to do it with a client. Do these things before you're in the hot seat, right? That way, when it does come to the client facing time, you've already got your flow state going. I know what I'm going to write. I know what I'm going to do. So your advisors are the ones that are supposed to be checking off on your RPAs. If they are not responding, please give them ample time. Do not expect us to be able to read your RPA when offers are due in two hours. I might be at a listing appointment and I'm not going to read my messages while I'm at a listing appointment right? Send them with plenty of time. 
ask your advisor if you have not already received it from your advisor. You can ask your advisor now, hey, do you have a scenario of an RPA that I can fill out and we can work on together? If it's Monday through Thursday, nine to five, you can always ask Karina for help as well. Yeah, great questions, you guys. Okay, awesome. One more still, and then I got to get rolling out of Walnut Creek. No. Okay, I just was going to say also um, California contracts class is every Wednesday from 930 to 11 is right after our team meeting. Go on there. Debbie Penny is a designated state broker. She goes over all of the contracts. She puts up on the screen the contract. She tells you where they are and see it and CAR to go and print it out so that you can take notes on it so that you will have that as a cheat sheet in case there is no one around and you're not sure you will have it there. She goes over it very thoroughly. The class is very interactive. You can ask as many questions as you need to. Syl, I'm so glad that you chimed in with that last little bit. And we're going to actually end on that note. Take the initiative to learn these things on your own before coming and freaking out about not being able to figure it out. Let's all make sure that we are taking that initiative to grow ourselves and grow our businesses. I love going to that contracts class that Syl was talking about. It's so informative, you guys. Okay, loves. I will see you all next Thursday. Next Thursday, we're going to discuss the listing agreement. We're going to flip flop instead of talking about buyers. We're going to talk about listings. I can't wait to see you guys all next Friday. Have an amazing weekend. Again, if you have any questions, hit me up on Slack and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. All right, bye.